In this video, I'll show you how to implement two smoke zones using Compact Smoke Plus. For this installation, you need the WSC310 Compact Smoke Plus version panel, two actuators representing the two smoke zones, the WLA331 rain sensor, two WSK501 brake glass units, two WSK103 manual override switches, the WSA333 cable gland set, the WSA310 smoke detector, and the end module for the fire alarm system. Here I have the Compact Smoke Plus panel. We'll have a look inside. Inside, we see the panel itself and the batteries. I remove the key from the top of the panel and use it to open the panel. Inside the panel, we find the installation manuals and the conformity declaration, the control panel labels in different languages, the cable end module for the cable surveillance, 10 kilo ohm resistors, and the cable for connecting the batteries. Notice there's a resistor connected on the X10, 5 and 6 input, which is the input for the rain sensor. I'll now start implementing the two smoke zones. I'll first connect the two actuators. The first actuator is going to run in motor link mode. I connect the cable cores in this order, white, green, brown, in S1, X1. The second actuator will run in standard 24 volt mode. In this case, I'll remove the cable end module and connect it back at the end of the actuator cable as close as possible to the actuator. I have three cable cores from the panel to the junction box and from the actuator to the junction I have only two, the plus and minus 24 volts. The green cable core is not connected. Now I'll connect the cable to the panel in the same order. White in terminal one, green in terminal two, and brown in terminal 3. The WSK103 manual override switch. Inside, we find the installation manual, the cable, and the switch itself. Next, I'll connect the manual override switch to the panel for zone 1. This will be connected to S1X3. the WSK501 brake glass unit. I take the brake glass unit out of the box. There's also an installation manual and the brake glass unit labels in different languages. I remove the key from the back and use it to open the brake glass unit. Inside, we see a label with the serial ID of the product that can be used later to identify this unit. The WSA310 smoke detector. I take it out of the bag. Inside, we have the installation manual and the smoke detector itself. I remove the plastic on top. This is how it looks inside. For smoke zone one, I've made these connections to the brake glass unit. WSK cable link into terminals 1, 2 and 3 and the smoke detector in terminals 7 and 8. When you connect smoke detectors, remember that on the last smoke detector you must connect the 10 kilo ohm resistor. For smoke zone 2, I've prepared the brake glass unit with the following connections. WSK link to terminals 1, 2 and 3, a resistor to terminals 7 and 8 because I don't have any smoke detector connected. 
and the manual override switch to terminals 9, 10 and 11, connecting the brake glass unit for zone 1. I have the plug prepared, so I push it in on terminal S1X5 and I plug the brake glass unit for smoke zone 2 on terminal S1X6. The smoke detector for the smoke zone 2 will be connected directly to the panel. Because there's only one sensor, I've connected the 10 kilo ohm resistor on it. I'll connect it now to terminal S1 X7. The WLA331 rain sensor. We open the box and inside we find the installation manual, the fixture for fixing the rain sensor on the roof and the sensor itself. I open the sensor. And inside we find the screws to close it, the terminals to connect it, and the dip switches to configure it. Connecting the rain sensor to the control panel. In order to do that I must remove the resistor from terminal X10 and connect it again on the sensor itself. As we can see here, I've connected the resistor to the terminals 3 and 4 on the rain sensor and the cable leading to the panel into terminal 1, 2 and 3. I'm now connecting the rain sensor to the panel, the black cable core, the common input, to terminal S1X106. The signal for the rain sensor, blue cable core, to the terminal S1X10 and the brown cable core, which is the plus 24 volts, to S1X10-4. I'm now connecting the panel to the mains power. First I remove the plastic cover. I connect the power cable to the green terminal and the earth to the screw to the body of the panel. Lastly, I put the plastic cover back in place. Attention here, do not switch on the power to the panel before mounting the plastic cover in place. To connect the batteries, I place the batteries inside. I use the short black cable to connect the two batteries to each other. I connect one end to black and the other to red terminals. I have two remaining cables, one red and one black. I connect the black cable to the black terminal on the battery. I wait with connecting the red cable to the red terminal on the battery until I power the control panel with the main power supply. All hardware is connected. I'm ready to power the panel. First the 230 volt power supply and then I'll connect the batteries. I can now configure the Compact Smoke Plus panel through the touch screen to implement the two smoke zones. I first log in to the system. I press the key. The default code is 4321. On the screen, you'll get this text box with login level 3. Now I can start the configuration. I'm selecting the configuration menu. I'll start with the motor line configuration. I'm going to configure motor line 1. I want motor line 1 to run in motor link mode, so I select motor link. Now I'll let the panel discover by itself the number of actuators by pressing Discover. It takes a few moments until the panel discovers the number of actuators. The panel found one actuator connected. We read here 
expected number of motors, one. The next thing I want to do is to associate the motor line with the motor group. In this case, the number one is OK, so I leave this setting. So motor line one will be associated with motor group one. I now continue with the configuration of the motor line two, which I want to run in the standard plus minus 24 volt mode. So I select plus minus 24 V motor mode. Next, I'm setting the motor configuration to three wire cable monitoring. I must set the stroke time to the time it takes for the actuator to open from fully closed to fully open. For our actuator that I'm using in this example, it takes 40 seconds. I want to associate motor line 2 with motor group 2, which is the default setting. Now, motor line 2 is also configured. In order to test if the configuration is correct and the actuators are working, I can use the up and down buttons on the controller. If I press up, the two actuators are running. If I press down, they close again. This means that they are configured and are running. Next, I'm going to configure the motor groups. For this, I'm selecting configuration, then motor group, motor group one. I want to associate motor group one with smoke zone one, which is the default setting. I keep the setting unchanged. I want to associate motor group two with smoke zone two. This is also the default setting, so I leave it as it is. Now the two motor groups are configured. In the next step, I'll configure the brake glass units. When we look at the brake glass units, we see that the yellow LED is blinking, meaning the brake glass unit has not been configured yet. I select the WSK link button. I can see that the panel has found two brake glass units. I select brake glass unit number one. On the screen, I see that it's a WSK501. It has a serial number, so I can identify which is the brake glass unit that is number one in the list in the panel. That's one way of identifying the unit. I can also press the reset button on the brake glass unit, and I can see that a blue circle appears on the button one, meaning that the brake glass unit I'm pressing now is the brake glass unit one in the list on the panel. In this installation, brake glass unit one is the brake glass unit I want to use for the smoke zone two. I'll go into the configuration of the brake glass unit one and I'll associate it with smoke zone two. When the brake glass unit is configured, only the green LED is switched on. If I press the red button for the alarm, then the red LED is switched on on the brake glass unit and on the panel behind, and a motor line two is opening. I press reset and the panel goes back to normal operation and the actuator is closing. I'll now configure brake glass unit number two in the list. I want to use it to control smoke zone one. I'll associate this brake glass unit to zone one. As you might remember, this brake glass unit has a smoke detector connected to it. I go down the list and I configure the smoke detector to be associated to the same zone as the brake glass unit itself. To test that the brake glass unit is configured correctly, I'll press the alarm button. We see that motor line one is opening. Press reset. The panel goes back to normal operation and the actuator closes. I want to test that the smoke detector is associated with the same smoke zone. So I disconnect the sensor from its base and I can see that the yellow LED is switching on indicating an error in the zone. 
Now I'll connect it back and the error disappears, returning to normal. Next, I want to configure the manual override switch. For this, I'm selecting local input. I know that my manual override switch that I want to configure is connected to S1, X3, 1 and 2. I select S1, X3, 1. I see that it's associated with motor group 1 and the function is open, which is what I need it to be. The short output function is stop, which is also what I need it to be. I now select S1, X3, 2. It's also connected with motor group 1. The function is close and the short function is stop. In order to test, I long press the open button and I see that the motor line 1 is opening. A short push and it stops. Long press on the close and the actuator closes. Configuration of the smoke detector. I'm selecting the input menu of the S1X7. I want to associate the smoke detector to smoke zone 2, so I select 2 here. The function in smoke zone 2 will be line B. Now the smoke detector is associated with smoke zone 2, and when it's activated, smoke zone 2 will go into alarm mode. In order to test without starting a fire, I create an error on the smoke detector by opening it and we can see the yellow LED switching on and on the display we see the yellow warning symbol on the top and also on the top of the button that represents the smoke zone too. When the smoke detector is put back in place, the warning disappears and the control panel goes back to normal operation. In order to test the rain sensor, I'll open the two motor lines. And then I'll activate the rain sensor by holding my hand over it to create humidity. We see that the rain sensor has been activated and the actuators are closing. I've now completed the configuration of the panel and have tested all the items connected to it. Everything is in working order.